it's not going to my, oh, here we go, the second page. Um, so a little bit about ourselves and Flex before, before I um, get into our online interview presentation. Um, we would have started off as Employee Mum in 2016 when our founder, Karen O'Reilly, set up Employee Mum because um, she saw a real need for, you know, a real need to for flexible work for professionals who've possibly taken a break to raise kids or take, take care of, you know, a relative or what have you and taking a career break and are ready to get back in. And she, you know, she saw a real niche for, for this type of uh, recruitment agency in Ireland. So she went about setting that up. I joined her in 2017. And, you know, as of now, we have just under 5,000 candidates registered with us. Um, in September 2019, we saw across 2019 that um, maybe half of our placements were actually non-parents. And then 30% of those we placed in flexible work were actually males. So Employ Mum, while it still exists and serves us well, it was quite limiting. So Employ Flex made sense. So now we run under the banner of Employ Flex also. Uh, we run a lot of free back to work workshops. Um, we did them actually for the last three or four months, every Thursday. Um, and we did them very successfully online actually. And the great thing about running them online was we actually could have a lot more in attendance than we would have um, in the face-to-faces, which we did run across, across Ireland in previous years. So, um, you know, that was a good learning for us and we may continue to do those more regularly then again from September onwards. Uh, we do a lot of work with on returnships. And if you don't know what a returnship is, it is essentially a, an internship, but for a professional who who's, has, has been educated, has some experience and has not worked in the previous two plus years. So we have some larger kind of multinationals who look for that type of candidate in particular. Uh, we continue to lobby for flexible work in Ireland and now more than ever and uh, now more than ever I suppose with with what's happened since early March um, you know it's flexible work has very much been come to the fore um, in Ireland and I think a lot of people that would have a lot of companies and clients who would have said before that you know remote work and working from home is is not possible for us. All of a sudden, we're catapulted into it, and they made it very quickly made it possible. So it's it's been positive for our world. Uh, we are continue to be keynote speakers and have been featured on a lot of national media, uh, I suppose especially again over the last six months, um, very much around remote working and any kind of tips. Um, you know, so we speak we speak regularly to several you know hundreds of candidates around their flexible work preferences. And we conduct a lot of surveys as well. And we, you know, we conduct and publish a lot of surveys. Um, you know, our candidates are very current and they're active job seekers. And, you know, it's, it's great to have very, um, you know, fresh, fresh um, results to share, to share then with our clients and with the media. So today, um, I suppose I'm talking about online interviews um, more than ever now it's, it's on the rise. You know, they, they weren't that prevalent in Ireland, I suppose, last year. Um, they're very much on the rise since COVID and I can see them continuing because they're also very efficient and they're, you know, they're a good time saver as well um, for both, for both candidate and our employer and potential employee. Um, and they do, you know, you can, there are some similar preparation that you can do for both, but it definitely does, the online, the video interview definitely does require a different type of preparation. So that's what I'm going to go through today. Um, you know, I've said in my intro before that it's easy to write off an online interview uh, as the same as an in-person, but there are some differences. And, you know, some of these are quite simple. Um, some of the agenda here now around the setting and your technology and punctuality. But there's a few other things that I've actually learned through my candidates who've interviewed over the last few months. They've come back to me saying, um, you know, I got this question or this, this was a, a little obstacle for me during this interview. So all of these I've added to this presentation today. Um, so yeah, we'll get straight in. So preparation, right? Preparation is, you know, having a video interview doesn't mean that you shouldn't take it seriously. Treat it as if you were interviewing in person. Treat it the exact same from the research you do, from the learning of your CV and the, yeah, you know, really delving in and learning about that company and having those questions prepared. Um, and then around the environment and the setting, choosing your location very carefully. Be wary of places like coffee shops or things that, you know, you, you, you can't really predict what type of noise or what type of um, noise might happen in, in, in that hour that you have that interview. Co-working spaces as well. Um, like the Republic of Work who are running these series, 
you know, they're great and they'll have quiet spots, but they also might have, if you're a member of a co-working space, they may have a, you know, an empty room. And, you know, if you're doing an interview, you may be able to book one of those rooms just for that, for that, um, you know, that more private, the more ease of mind for yourself, really, more than anything. Um, and I suppose you also don't want to interview in a place where there's lots of visual, visual distractions either. You know, the ideal setting really for, for a video interview is a secluded room where you can shut out distractions. Also, if you are living in a town or a city, and like I often say for video interviews, the natural lighting is good, but if you're near a, a, a living, like a window next to a busy street, just, just try and avoid that and make sure the window is shut because, you know, you, you know, there could be a surprise and somebody could decide to, you know, start some drilling outside the window just as you're, you're delving into some of your interview answers. Also around kids and pets, you know, make sure they're either out of the house or being supervised somewhere um, so that you have that distraction-free environment and it really does put your mind at ease and that you, you're not sitting there with the fear of somebody appearing at the door. Um, the internet as well, around the preparation piece, the internet has really made it incredibly simple to familiarise yourself with your interviewer uh, before you meet them virtually. You know, HR professionals or, or the, the business people who you are, who are going to be interviewing you, they're generally very active on LinkedIn. And a quick Google search will, will shed some light on who you are meeting. And it is nice sometimes to put that face to the name, even if it is virtually done so. And as I said earlier, you know, remember to prepare those questions as well to ask the interviewer when the time comes. Um, and I think when you do research and even Google search on the company and find out if they've been in the news for any reason recently, whether it's you know some, some new positive PR piece or what have you, um, make sure you have that, you know, maybe try and weave that into some of your questions to show, you know, how keen you are to join that company. Punctuality. Um, you know, as I said at the start there, you have to treat it exactly as an in-person interview and similarly around time, you know, it's courteous to show up, you know, 10 minutes early at least for an interview and similarly so for video, video interviews. And even though it's nearly more important for video interviews because you want to be early because it might take you some time to log on. It might be, you know, the company might be using a video conferencing software video conferencing software that you haven't used before so you might it might take you a few moments to download that um of, often as well actually you know if you're using some devices you might have the space to download so so normally you will have that invite in advance and that you can make sure that whether it's a, like microsoft teams or some of those other larger the, the software programs that the larger companies use uh you also want to make sure you know you want all of that ready beforehand so that you are ready to go at the actual interview time being late for an interview, no matter what the reason is, you know, it's never a good way to start a successful um, online interview or any interview for that, state, for that matter. And then technology. You know, technology has obviously kept us going for the last six months. And, um, you know, I think we've all become a little bit more tech savvy. But, you know, in advance of an interview, it would be so, such a letdown and disappointing if you found out that your microphone or your webcam didn't work right before your interview. So when preparing for the video interview, I always kind of advise, you know, three kind of main components for my candidates to test. And the first one there is audio settings. Do your speakers and microphones work? And thankfully, most of the Zooms and the Skypes and all them allow you, allow you a little test your software so you can actually, you know, speak through and, and make sure that your volume and clarity is all there um, and make sure, you know, you're coming across clear without any static. Camera settings is the next one. Is it too dark? Is it too bright? Is there something kind of distracting in the background? Uh, you know, best to sit in front of, you know, solid colored wall with plenty of light. Uh, this way as well, the interviewer is focusing on you and what you're saying and not being distracted by the decor or some, some artwork behind you. Um, the internet connection. You know, sometimes for these, these webinars and stuff, I'd often just plug directly in with the Ethernet cable for a hard connection, even though my modem would normally live in a, you know, a different room, just, just for that sanity and just you know, to, to give you that bit of peace of mind as well. Video conferencing can take up a lot of bandwidth and a, you know, a spotty Wi-Fi connection may cause an, an overly lagged session of some sort. Um, and yeah, I mentioned earlier about Zoom and um, Microsoft Teams. So familiarize yourself with the software that's being used. 
And you know, many of you probably at this stage have Zoom or GoToMeeting or Skype or a few of those common platforms downloaded. And you know, you can sign up for a lot of free trials for them, and many of them, thankfully, are now free. Or there's also very good like five-minute tutorial or tutorial um, clips on YouTube. Just do you know, do whatever you can to you know put yourself at ease and you know avoid any of the unknown. My next point is around your voice and your pace. And it's, it's, this one is always a challenge for me. I, I, do, I do have um, post-its right above my screen here telling me to you know, mind the pace and take some pauses. I think Irish people in general are quite chatty and maybe even more so because you're not really picking up those visual cues from your interviewer. You might, you know, a pause might be nearly uncomfortable for you. So I think more than ever when using technology for an interview, for a video interview, there can be delays or the microphone may not pick up your voice very well. So to prevent this from happening, take your time when speaking and enunciate your words. And this will make sure that your interviewer can really hear you and understand you. And then listening, and actually I mentioned, I never mentioned this, but always having a pen and paper handy as well when you would not, probably not normally walk into a face-to-face -face interview with a notepad and pen, but certainly have one to hand for a video interview because somebody could ask you a question and they could go off on a little bit of a, I don't want to say tangent, but they could be explaining, um, giving you a little rationale of why they asked the question. So take a few notes so that then you can go back and say, actually, you mentioned X or Y. So it's showing that you're engaged and that you are truly listening. Um, sometimes when you're on a video job interview, it's very easy to accidentally cut someone off due to slight audio delays or from not paying attention to non-verbal cues. So to avoid this, uh, you know, listen carefully to the interviewer and you can wait for those few seconds before speaking just to avoid that cutting in. And I know those few seconds could feel sometimes like a lifetime, but really it's just a simple pause. And, you know, you can just be nodding and engaged and for formulating your answer in your head. Um, attire. So a video, you know, I've said it a few times, a video interview doesn't, doesn't mean that you should, you know, shouldn't take it any less serious. Um, you know, treat it as if you're going to a face-to-face -face interview and it, it very much helps you to get into the zone too and it's a very frequently overlooked video uh, uh, overlooked um, tip around video interviews you know and you know I've, I've a picture in here of um, the MEP Luke Ming Flanagan um, I'm sure many of you saw that in the news and he was on a you know an official call and you know he obviously made an assumption that you know he was only visible from the shoulders up yet um, he was sitting on the side of a bed and um, yeah, half on the way, getting dressed. So, um, you know, avoid the risk of wearing professional attire on the top only and wear interview toes from head, to, interview clothes from head to toe. And it does also help you get in the zone. You know, there's, there's a saying out there about putting on your work shoes. It's kind of a nice psychological thing when you have your proper work shoes on that you do, you're, you're in that zone. And also before getting on to any logging on to any calls you can actually view yourself through your webcam to make sure your outfit looks professional enough and it's just can be another little test for your camera as well um so yeah i think that mep was it was um a, an uh an example that was used a lot in any of these types of calls over the last few months um my next tip then is around body language your body language in a video interview can really convey and tell a lot of of things about who you are as a person. And we kind of say this a lot at Employed Flex, you can't really smile, you can't smile enough really on a video interview. You can, you know, you can, as long as the questions, as long as it's all kind of positive story and you're giving answers, you can be smiling and nodding and really engaging. The, you know, you're losing out on that handshake and that face-to-face -face first impression. So you have to be really strong at giving that and conveying that uh, via video. So, you know, you can present that positive image by, you know, sitting up straight with good posture, uh, placing both feet on the ground, avoiding things like slouching or holding your head up with your hand or any of that. Um, I think as well, touching hair is, a, I think even for COVID more so, that a lot of people will, will touch and play with their hair. Um, so it's, it's, it's trying to avoid all of those things. And I mean, a positive as well of on, online interviews is, you can keep your hands in your lap or you know to avoid that distracting gesturing or fiddling and another really important one and it's just the last point here around looking into the camera it's really important to pay attention where you're looking 
if I turn back on the video, my own video here now, um, I often find that I'm actually looking at my own face as opposed to looking at the camera where I should be looking. So it's a really, um, it's, it's, it's a really important one actually make eye contact. So looking into the camera as often as possible especially if you're speaking and you're speaking to one of the interviewers because it gives it gives them the the sense that you're very much engaged and you're not distracted by what's happening in the screen so i should be really looking directly into the, that light on my cam rather than reading reading my slides okay, just next slide and um, getting in the mood to talk um, I had a, I had a cand I only added this in recently because I had a candidate who had a phone interview, and we did a lot of prep the day in advance. We did a lot of we ensured we had the right technology going. We did a lot of prep, worked out great. It was an early morning interview. I texted her in the morning, "How are you feeling? All good. Good luck." But she she came back to me after and she said she made the mistake that the first time she spoke out loud was actually to the interview, and she said she had that really morning husky voice, even though she'd been up for hours in advance preparing and learning her CV but she actually never spoke out loud. So I thought it was a, it was a good tip. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to answer questions, you know, cheerfully and energetically if you've been cooped up inside for a long time. And, you know, the interviewers can really see that. They can see the energy or any kind of fatigue coming through. So, you know, as I said earlier around, you know, smiling, smiling at, um, smiling as, you know, there's no, you can't really smile too much in a phone interview. You know, that, that energy and enthusiasm will be picked up and it'll all be, you know, in a positive, positive manner. And, I, you know, I've written here around getting some fresh air to get your energy levels up. Yeah, just getting out and doing that lap around the house or anything or a few jumping jacks or a few squats. If you, if you felt the urge just, just to, you know, give you that little bit of endorphin boost that you need. And a cheat sheet. The big positive of having a phone interview is being able to avail of a cheat sheet. And um, basically a cheat sheet is having some post its having some notes around the wall behind you or, you know, attached to your laptop if you need to. I, um, I was doing an interview for an awards uh, thing a few, a few years ago and I remember just kind of learning off the 10 things that I was, was key. I was definitely going to get these 10 points into this interview, however I could weave them in. And I, this was obviously face to face, so I had to learn them off. I'm going to make sure I got them in early on, but you could have them, you know, you could have them posted around around your screen, no problem. Um, to to ensure that you get some of those, and it's some, and then sometimes you can also have you know little post-its of little bits of inspiration for yourself, and little bits of keep it up, smile, don't forget to breathe, <laughs> a few pauses, and um, some things like that. But I think you can really take that, um, you know, take advantage of that. And the interviewer on the other side is really not going to know, you know, if you're just you you could be just thinking of of, of formulating an answer in your head when you're really having a quick look at some of your, you know, your bullet points that you have uh, stuck around the wall behind you. Um, so yeah, I do think that's good to kind of if, you know, if there was some great achievement or something very transferable from the job spec and the job you're interviewing for that you really want to get across, you know, have it above so that you're kind of, you know, mentally ticking them off the list then. And, and then sometimes when you kind of get them out at the start of the interview, it's more of a conversation and, and you know, that's only a positive thing. Now, if things go wrong, so with technology, there's always the chance of things going wrong. And so, you, you know, here are some backup plans to have ready just in case. And I always, I always say this, that how you react, how you deal with these types of, um, some of these uh, interruptions that I'm going to go through now is actually really key for the potential employer interview. They want to see that you can manage when something's been thrown at you. So, um, so yeah, here's some of the tips that I would suggest. So if the video or your audio stops working, sorry, now I just need to move my face out of the way. Um, yeah, if your video or your audio starts, stops working, um, ask the interviewer for a phone number where you can reach them. And so if you do experience any sort of forms of technical difficulties, so if the video does cut out, call them at that number. Um, you know, ask them if you can continue over the phone, um, which is even more of a positive. So then you've one less, less, um, you know, they can't see you as well and you can be a little bit more at ease or, or, or else um, reschedule, reschedule if they prefer. If, if there's some noise interruptions during the conversation, I mentioned earlier about living in a busy road or street and if there's, you know, an ambulance passing or some form of construction, just interrupt or pause that interview 
apologise for the interruption and ask for a few moments until the noise has subsided. And that's very much respectful. I think doing that in a calm manner rather than showing showing maybe some frustrations. It's all it's all very good and very telling. And you know, the interviewer is certainly taking note of that as well. And you know, if someone inter, inter, enters the room unexpectedly, I had the picture at the start that I, I never alluded to of the uh, the Sky News political um, correspondent there a few years ago, who was you know his little daughter was jazz hazing, hand, jazz hands walking in, and then the little one on her, on the little roller as well. Um, and you know, I'd say there's, I'd say several of those instances have have had, had happened in the last six months during COVID when. People have, have not had the crashes open, have had not the child or, childcare options that they would normally have. So, you know, if any of those happen, you know, apologise, maybe turn off your video for a moment, mute your microphone, take care of it and come back, you know, full of energy again and come back and, you know, ready to go. And yeah, I think I can't stress enough, you know, how you deal with those is, is a really good indicator of, you know, of, of your person and your own traits. And um, these are some sample questions. Some of these questions now were some of my candidates over the last few months who've interviewed and came back and said that they were asked some of these questions and maybe some of them they had not prepared for. And actually I'll preface this by saying, you know, I've said here for remote roles and there's WFH there is work from home. So remote, remote work is not just working from home. Remote work can be working from co-working spaces or from different places. So just want to be clear on that. But I had a girl who was, and it was a fantastic role, a fully remote executive assistant role. And um, she did a very good interview. My client came back and he said she did a very good interview. Very good, very good. And he said, the last question I asked her was, what is your broadband speed? And she was unable to answer that. And I thought oh, that, that was a bit unfair. But unfortunately, he, he ruled her out because of that. And I suppose if you are going for a remote or, you know, these days there's a lot of hybrid options. Um, some of some companies I know uh, here locally in Cork are doing kind of half and half and, you know, offering offering their employees uh, to choose your days. You have to stick to your specific days where you will work remotely and then the other days you're in the office. But broadband, uh, but as part of that, they all had to do a broadband test speed to, to ensure that when they're on calls such as this or if they're running any form of webinar that it's, you know, at an acceptable speed for that company. And you can do a very quick broadband test speed, broadband speed test.ie to check your broadband. And if you are living in some remote areas, there is these boosters you can buy for around 99 euros. So if you are applying for like the likes of eBay and some of those other large companies who, are, who have a lot of customer service roles remotely, do a broad, do a speed test, and you know have a Google to see what's the ex acceptable, and then and then um, maybe if you it's worth the investment of that of that booster to bring you to that level. Because I have heard of another girl that you know early days in COVID, a, a busy call center, and she had accepted the job and all of that, and then the broadband speed test she didn't pass, and I suppose she was unaware that she could have bought something to you know to boost to that. Um, so some of the other questions that were some of my recent candidates interviewing were um, were asked, were, have you worked from home before and what were the challenges? So it's it's good, you know, be honest with this, but, you know, many of us, many of you may have had a chance to work at home. It might not have been official, but it might have been there's somebody coming to deliver something and I need to be at home. But yeah, try, you know, try and think of, you know, the challenges or you could, you can be very honest and say, you know, I'm working from home and I thought, okay, a few little household chores at the same time and then you just had to discipline yourself and you know that's good you know if you say i you know i did x and now i've learned from it and you know the next question there around how do you overcome it um why do you want to work from home you know many of us probably know people now that are very keen to get back to the office or if they haven't gone back already they miss that water cooler chats and they miss that face-to-face -face engagement and i think in general us irish people are you know we're really good for that rapport uh, but some people are not so make sure you you know, if you, your answers around working from home are, are not that I'd like to sleep in, you know, make sure they're around, you know, reducing commute, spending more time with loved ones or what have you, more time to invest in a hobby or a sport that I'm interested in. And, you know, make sure you spin it around very positively around being productive and that you still, you know, still work um, as productive. Describe your office setup. You know, 
don't, I suppose, don't lie. Some people, and it's very acceptable that, you know, there might be more than one person in a household working from home. So there might be a spare room and there might be somebody at a kitchen table. So don't say I have this fabulous, fabulous home office. And because you could very well be asked for a little virtual tour. And um, yeah, you could be in trouble then. So you could say if you're, if this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a remote work, sorry. This is a remote role that you're applying for. You could say, you know, right now I'm in a makeshift spare room, but if I was successful in this role, I, I, I have, you know, I intend to, you know, invest in the, the, you know, invest in X, Y, and Z to, you know, bring it up to a, you know, an office level. And how do you structure a day? So how do you structure a day when working remotely really was the question. You know, no employer nowadays wants somebody that says, I log on at eight and I don't leave my desk till six. Make sure you show that you're fitting in your, your breaks and your 11 a.m. break and your lunch break and that you're getting fresh air. Um, yeah, I think gone are the days of, you know, somebody sitting, you know, somebody sitting and, and dining, al desco, as we say, where they're just, you know, even having their lunch at their desk and, and um, yeah, not taking the breaks. You know, you're, all the research out there is that you're a lot more productive if you move around one, every hour, even if it is just walking around the house once or what have you. Um, Rating your tech skills from one to 10. So many of us probably have improved in our tech skills, you know, this year because we have been thrown into, you know, working online and virtually and, you know, it, all those pl common platforms that I mentioned, like Zoom and all those others, we've been self-teaching self ourselves some of these. So yeah, be honest around that and, you know, rate, rating your tech skills and what do you do to stay focused? So this is a good one um, for remote working as well, you know, just write your to-do list. You know, you know, we talk about eating the frog a lot in Employee Flex where you get that trickier piece of work out of the way in the morning so that then you can focus on the, the regular and the, the daily bits. And how do you switch off? I mean, again, that's all around making sure you're taking your own time. And um, yeah, so that's, sorry, no, let me, so yeah, these are just some um, short tips here on uh, starting strong. That conversational tone I mentioned is really important. An interview, it is very much a two-way, two-way, two-way chat. Um, I know we often feel very that it's like a teacher versus a student, but no, it's it is a conversation, and you know, it's all about the fit at the end of the day. Listening, I mentioned uh, distractions, eliminating those distractions. Uh, don't overdo it, I suppose. Don't. You know, if you if you are availing those cheat notes, don't don't read an essay behind you. That makes it very obvious. You know, just answer succinctly and move on. Um, take advantage of being unseen. That again is around cheat notes and having even a pen and paper as well. Um, have your questions ready for them as well. That's really important. Good questions. If you've done your research on them, you might have some very current question around some PR that they've had. Or I always like to ask. You know, find out if you don't know at this stage if it's a new role or mat leave or what have you but also I like to ask questions about you know what does success look like in this role and that's really putting yourself as if you've already um, accepted the job you know how how will you measure how will I know I've done a good job in three months and six months and that also sometimes puts them on their toes and you know there's no harm in that too because you know all the questions are coming coming your way I keep an eye on the time and I end on a high note you know I mentioned earlier about smiling and um, you know, be very positive. You know, I love that. You know, from what I've heard today, uh, you know, I think I'll be a great fit. And um, you know, you know, obviously, thank you, thanks profusely for for their time and all of that. So there, that's some of my. It's we have lots more blog posts actually around online video interviews, very specifically. A lot of these are just written in the last six months because they've obviously become a lot more um, more important. So they're all on employflex.ee, and we have some advice then as well around. Um, more and we have some more like training sessions and you know one of the, one of the areas we've gotten quite busy in is training both managers to manage a team remotely because that would have been very new for a lot of people um so while the recruitment end of our business was sl slow enough in march and april um you know our training end of things kept kept going and yeah so that's that's the presentation piece and i'm going to um stop sharing now and open up um, for questions, um, if anyone has any questions for me, and actually while I'm waiting, if anyone wants to, you can use, sorry, for any of those who have joined late, there's a, if you hover at the bottom there, you see the word chat, so you can, um, 
you can pop any question in there if you'd like. I actually received three questions via email. So I'll, I'll go ahead with those first. Um, so one person said, how would you advise to follow up after an interview? So yeah, it's a really good question actually. Um, and you know, not enough people do it. And I think the positive of following up, you know, if, if it was between you and another candidate and you followed up saying, thank you very much for the time, you know, having thought about it more over the last 24 hours, it's definitely the type of company I want to join and grow with and learn from. And just a short and snappy email around that would be great. Um, there's a good chance that you, you definitely have some form of email communication because it would have been confirming, confirming, um, confirming the interview and all of that. So I mean, that's the positive of online. You probably have some form of access to, to the right person in HR for that. Um, another question, um, all oh, right, so this is similarly around, around cameras. Uh, I find myself looking at my own face instead of the camera. Any tips on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm still here looking back at my face rather than rather than um, looking right at the camera. I do have right above an arrow, right above the camera. With it. I have an arrow basically saying, look here. And um, it is hard. And I think you just end up looking at And, you know, if any of you had your videos on, I'd, I'd be just looking around, looking for engagement and nods. But... If it's just one person you're you're or if there's a few people interviewing you, it's great to look look them in the eye and just show them that you're, you know, not engaged and show them. So yeah, I mean it is hard. It is. So I think take advantage and have have a neon poster or a neon post it telling you to look here and you know there's there's a light on my camera here just reminding me of where exactly the spot is where you're looking directly in. And Jake asked. Okay, he said, the visual clarity on my laptop is not as strong as my iPad. Could I get away with doing a video interview using a tablet? And would my interviewer notice this? Well, yeah, definitely you could. Now, you would. Have, what I would advise, obviously, is maybe, even if you were using a phone, just to have it positioned so you're not touching. So that once you're on, you have a position, you have the volume, and then you're sitting back like this. Um, the times I would advise not to use a tablet or a device is when you're needing to share a screen and um, we need to share a screen or if you're, you know, if, if it was present, if it was an interview too, where you've been asked to do a mini case study or a presentation. Um, in, the, in those cases that a desktop is handier because you can navigate away here without, you know, without, you know, basically going in and pressing buttons on, on your, on your tablet device. Um, for ourselves, our team at EmployFlex, we have a Zoom call every morning and on the days that I, I don't need to share or show some, share some presentation or what have you, I always use my phone because it is a lot stronger clarity and, you know, sometimes I'm on the move. So, you know, headphones in and the Zoom call works just as well. And I do understand, I think that, you know, the, um, a lot of those, the Samsung devices and some of those devices are, have excellent visual clarity as well and maybe more so than, than our desktops. So there are the three questions that have come in. Thanks, Caroline. Caroline just gave a thank you there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else at all. Um, you know, my 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 email is jobs at employflex.ie. So if, if anything at all uh, comes to mind, um, you know, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And, you know, if there's or even if you want to do the quickest 10 minute, you know, practice run of your technology, um, just, you know, don't hesitate to get in touch on that. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's no other, there's no other questions come in. Um, oh, maybe there is. One second. Yeah, sorry, there's just a lot of thank yous there, so that's good. Um, I don't think I have anything else really to 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 go away. So I think if there's nobody else typing, or there's one or two people typing, I'll give it another moment. Um, yeah. So other than that, I hope you get to enjoy some of the sun that has appeared. Um, yeah. No, there's just a few thank yous. So you know what? On that note, I shall. Yeah. It's just all thank yous. Thanks very much, everyone. Um trying to look in the camera, but again, here I'm looking at my face. Um, I'm breaking a lot of the rules now by touching my hair and my face, but thank you so much for, for attending and taking some time out of your lunch break. Um, jobs at employflex.ie is my email address. Employflex.ie is our website. Thanks to Republic of Work for allowing us to 
for inviting us to do this lunch and learn. And um, yeah, best of luck in your job hunt if you're if you're on the search. Thank you all. <laughs>